And now moving on to, oh yeah, okay. You remember when cartoons used to be this? <laughs> And then they turned into this. And then in recent years, they devolved into this. Hola, soy Dora. Well, you can spank. <laughs> I mean, thank Peggy Charon for that. It always works for me. Peggy Charon was an activist of sorts who founded the Action for Children's Television a group in the mid 60s in an effort to lobby for higher quality children's programming. Although her intent was not censorious in nature at all, she even stated so at one time, saying that censorship was not a solution for anything. Her major concern was making sure that the Saturday morning cartoon block did not turn into one long cereal commercial. Nobody make corn flakes like Kellogg's! Don't forget to get some! Yay! However, the other women in the group were a bunch of horrible mother monkeys who were hell-bent on censorship and authoritarian control, which unfortunately shifted control from the artists to executives and special interest groups, just like theirs. People, what do we want? <laughs> Defenders of this group like to point out that they've never, ever tried to have a show canceled or banned. Yeah, they didn't have to. They would go right into the animation studios along with a horde of child psychologists, aka these monkeys, and cut things directly right out of the storyboard. According to its definition, I'm pretty sure that counts as rape. Listen and believe, people. Nice looking couple. I like the girl. Mm, hate the guy. Strike him! <laughs> oh, I meant to play with your jacket. Unnecessary. Lose it! Consider it gone. The argument these psychologists make for cutting things out of cartoons is that, you know, those actions will adversely influence children. Well, uh, a singer-songwriter, John Denver, was also at the uh, PMRC hearings that I mentioned earlier, and he had this to say to Tipper Gore and her minions. The problem, Mr. Chairman, in my opinion, has to do with our willingness as parents to take responsibility for the upbringing of our children, to pay attention to their interests, to respond to their needs, and to recognize that we as parents and as individuals have a greater influence on our children and on each other than anything else could possibly have. Wise words, Mr. John Denver. What he said goes for music, movies, TV, any art form you can think of. <sighs> Why are all the smart people dead? Eat lead, Einstein. Oy. Show's over, Shakespeare. The Looney Tunes were certainly hacked to pieces because of these people, but it was actually the Incredible Hulk's Saturday morning cartoon that inspired their crusade against cartoons they didn't like. And their reasoning behind that was they didn't want little girls scared of the big green monster. So I'm guessing these parents never fed their kids vegetables ever again. Green Giant! Oh, they continued along in this vein, you know, cleaning up Saturday morning cartoons to their specifications. You think there's too much violence on television? Until the Gipper became president. Yes, Mr. Ronald Reagan. You see, his administration had this absolute aversion to most regulations, so her program got the boot. Uh, this is the only good thing Ronald Reagan did as president, by the way. Uh, Mr. President, is it true that you had no knowledge of the Iranian arms deal at any stage? I had no knowledge of anything at any stage. <laughs> I'm against terrorists, and I won't have anything to do with them. That's why I got Israel to sell them the guns. 
<laughs> they have to get up pretty late in the morning, fellas, to catch me awake. <laughs> but then, Peggy Sharon came back with a vengeance, demanding that shows be more educational, thereby making it way easier for parents to be lazy and let the TVs babysit their kids. Aw, this show's got no pro-social values. Animation director uh, John Chris Falusi led a short-lived rebellion against this kind of authoritarian control. Happy, 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 joy, joy, joy. But that ended because of reasons, and so the animation industry pretty much just sunk deeper into that same bullshit. Thank you, Captain Planet. No problem, Kwame. And now, I'd better coach two poachers on their manners. And this led to a somewhat interesting phenomenon. More young people would gravitate towards cartoons made in Japan, or Japanese anime, as they came to call it. They found that the graphics, the stories, the characters, and pretty much everything was vastly superior to any cartoons made in North America. But really, anime only looks and feels superior to North American uh, product because in Japan, they don't have parent groups and you know, politicians and you know, various other censor monkeys telling them, telling the artists how to do their jobs. In Japan, every artist from the high-profile Miyazaki to, you know, the little kid making doodles is given the utmost respect and granted absolute creative freedom. That's how much the entire country of Japan respects artists and their work. And yet, when it's shown over here, it's heavily censored, of course. Can't let that freedom of expression through, no matter where it's from. I'll give you a comparison. A few years ago, when the government of Myanmar tried to implement a dictatorship, the first thing they did was got rid of the internet to prevent any outside influences from getting in. And this censoring of Japanese cartoons is pretty much the same thing. They don't want us being corrupted by you know, Japanese freedom of expression, and, and they want us complacent in their agenda. Case in point, this is a true story. The story of greed, sex, and murder. While working on the new adventures of Mighty Mouse, the aforementioned John Chris Felusi decided to do a little social experiment. For one of the episodes, he cut out any jokes that they wanted to put in and just told a boring, straightforward story. It was very tedious to work on, but they got it done anyway. And as a result of that, that episode won an award from some parents group, calling it like a good, positive show for kids. And of course, that award was not given on merit. It was merely a carrot used as incentive to keep animation studios toeing the line of their parent group agenda. Just hold it right there. I am the chairperson for Adults Against Funny Cartoons, and I've counted over 60 acts of mindless violence in this cartoon. So I'd say that incident with Mighty Mouse makes it official. The parent groups trying to control cartoons just hate it when people have fun, and will try to stop it any way they can. I'd even go so far as to say as the thought of anyone having fun makes them react like this. <laughs> 